Today, we do a build. One that will be going across the pond, as they say. So who's it for and all that great stuff, and what are we gonna do? Stay tuned, you'll have to find out. Who this is for is our great little friend across the pond in the UK, Rapid Nismo. I did one for liver die cast and it, he just really fell in love with the design and the paint and everything I did. So I figured I would do him one. A buddy of mine has got a box that's going over there to him so I contacted him and asked if I could throw this in because you know sending one car would cost me like $25 and I don't know how much He's paying to send the whole box, but one more car is not going to matter. It's going to the same guy. And the guy said, yeah, sure. So I'm going to get this car done, get it shipped over to him, and then it will be on his its way to Rapid Nismo. I'm not going to do anything real fancy with this. I'm going to... Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's get it out of the pack first. All right, it's starting to do its thing. Just have to give it time sometimes. You know, ah, there we go, it's just starting to work. Look at that magic. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to do the top, but I did it anyway, so. Live and learn. I was actually busy doing other cars, and I did this one by accident, but that's all right, we'll glue it back on. Now the little fella's favorite color I learned through another guy Matter of fact, the same guy that I'm sending the car to to ship over there, his favorite color is blue. Now, it's not the color blue that I'm going to be doing. It is actually the, the color blue that is on the, the new Liberty Walk GTR, but that's okay. Blue is blue in my book. I hate to lose the, the tampos for the taillights and all that good stuff, but, <clears throat> you know, whenever you do a custom paint job, you gotta you got to lose what you lose, right? But it's a pretty cool casting. I can see some marks on the hood. I don't know. We may try to fill those and get rid of them. But first thing we gotta do is get it drilled apart. So let's do that. All right, as always, a little bit of oil. Keep everything nice and cool and sharp. Dot there, dot there. And we're just gonna drill this out. Whew, man, that was tiresome. Right, let me get one of my containers and assign it for him. I don't know if I'm going to change the interior or not because, it's, as you can see, it's really hard to see anyway. We may do it. I just don't know yet. But we need that. Put that in there. That in there for now. I probably won't do anything to the base, but we're going to be chroming the wheels and then we're going to be painting blue outer ring on the wheels but that's the plan i like i said i don't know if we're going to change this or not i'm going to see how it's going to look with the blue i'm definitely going to chrome the wheels i'm definitely going to put the blue stripe around the, the rim and we'll see from there so i've got that set up for them so i don't lose any of the parts now I've got to finish drilling these out, and I've got to file the edges, and then I've got to put the screws in it. And then it'll be ready to go in a stripper. But once you get everything drilled out, as you can see, there's actually a lot that comes out of there. It leaves these really rough edges, so if you're going to be using screws, and you're going to be putting the body on and off, like for modifications, checking wheels, and all that stuff, you really need to file all that down. Then, all you got to do is just test fit it and make sure everything goes back together nice and smooth. And if it does, that means you've done your job. And you see that goes together real easy, comes apart real easy. That's exactly what we're looking for. And these do a couple of things. They help ensure that no trash and gunk gets in the hole. And then it gives the helping hands something to hold on to. It'll hold on to that screw so much better then if you don't have anything during painting or decals or anything along that nature. So that's why I put screws in now. 
All right, here we go. Yeah, it's nice and running because we just had a rain shower. And anybody that's ever lived in North Carolina knows whenever it rains for a while, the land here gets real soft if you don't get, if you don't stay on the road or on the driveway. So it's exactly what happened to that Honda. And look, it's just sinking up real fast. So next time you see this will be when we check for casting lines and do a light polishing on it and or not polishing but hitting it with this the uh, scotch bright or the steel wool depending on which one we want to do and then we'll get ready for the painting process It's not bad. We're not trying to polish this to perfection because it's going to get a primer and a paint. So most of what's left, the primer will actually fill and hide. But I just wanted this to look halfway decent, you know, because, you know, you start off with something good, you're going to finish with something good. And there was just so many little bumps and rough spots on this. I couldn't let it go like that. So that's why I did it. There's still a couple little divots on the hood. I don't know if I if the primer will hide them or not. I hope it does. Anyhow, while that dries, we're going to go ahead and mix up the primer. <clears throat> I'm going to be, this is going to be a dark color, or it requires a dark base color, so I'm using the black auto born sealer. You can reduce it 10% by volume, and it won't take much to spray that one car. But as always with anything, you got to shake it up really good. Again, it's not going to take a lot. That's probably too much, but you can't be real stingy on it. You gotta, I always try to cover just the bottom of the cut because by the time I put in a reducer, that amount will grow. And that's probably a little bit more than 10%, but and then we just mix it up. Now all we gotta do is get everything set up. And I do that every time.
So the paint job that I'm going to be putting on this car, I need, it's going to be a two-tone paint job, and I need for part of that to be a gloss black. So we've got it primered in black, but it needs to be a gloss black. So for that, I'm going to be using Wicked Colors, Wicked Jet Black. And I'm going to thin this just a little bit, but i got to shake it up, get it in the cup, and all that good stuff. I don't need a bunch. But that much should be plenty. Probably too much, to be honest, but that's okay. Rather have too much and not enough, right? Then have to break it out and try to remix it and all that stuff. So now we're going to thin it down. It says you can spray that straight out of the bottle, but that's too thick. There's no way in the world I can spray that out of the bottle. So I'm just going to stir this up and then we'll get everything set up. So we'll see you in that step. So we've got this bed boy, we've got it primed, and we have the black on it. And as you can see, it is almost flawless. I mean, that black and that primer lays down so good. Well, next step is, is to put the second color on it. I could leave it like this and send it, you know, just do some touch-up work on it, you know, like paint the tail lights and all that good stuff. But I have another idea. And what we're going to be doing is, taping along the hood line, taping along the door jam line and the top will remain black but the sides the rear and the front are going to be blue that's right we're going to be putting candy 2.0 blue on this particular color is karib karib or however you want to pronounce it blue but we can't do that just yet for a candy color to shine through it first has to have a silver base coat so now you got to figure out well, what silver base coat do you want you've got the aluminum you've got the metalized version you've got what used to be quicksilver chrome which they don't call it quicksilver chrome anymore I think it's just quicksilver and the number is W357 or something like that but anyhow I first have to tape it off and then we're going to shoot it with that gray let me pick out the gray but like i mentioned first up we got to get it taped off so i'm gonna do that and then we'll come back because as you can see I'm, the paint has kind of settled so i'm turning it upside down to try to allow for some of that to come down and then i got to shake it up really good and get the paint booth set up so with that stated let's get this bad boy taped now you can see my train of thought here everything i want to stay black i have taped up I have it taped across the hood line. I have it taped down the fender line and all that great stuff. So now all we're gonna do is mix up the paint, spray the sides and all that good stuff. And I even have it taped off in there so there's no overspray that can go through and come out somewhere where I don't want it to. Now all I gotta do is mix up the paint and go from there.
All right, we've got that coat on there. Now, I didn't want to just coat it with metal paint. I wanted it to have kind of a black chrome finish to it, which is exactly what this has. The reason for that is the paint that I'm putting on there, I want it to be a really dark pearl, but I want it... It's hard to explain if you've never seen it. A lot of people just think you could throw chrome paint or polish something up, something up paint it with the translucent paint, and it looks the same as putting in over a chrome or a black chrome, and it's a totally different look. A lot of people ask how long I wait to take my tape off, and I tell them the same thing. As soon as I get everything put up, that's when I take it off. So I'm gonna pull this off and show you the final product. Well, not final product, but what it looks like now because the next coat the blue will go over the whole thing black and the chrome chrome it'll go over everything so let me get the tape off all right so we're gonna mix up the paint now put in a little bit of balancing clear which is the carrier for the paint and i don't need a bunch and only put about 10 drops because by the time you put the paint in as a way of multiplying like rabbits so again i'm using this carib or carib blue i'm assuming it means caribbean blue i'm not exactly a hundred percent sure i'm assuming that's short for caribbean but anyhow that's the blue we're using i might have to give me one of those little battery operated blenders but anyhow gonna mix that in And I got a feeling I should have went darker on my, I mean brighter on my base coat, but I didn't. I'm going to just use what I got. That's all you can do. I mean, it's at that time and that point of the game. Can't go back and make any adjustments now, but that should be plenty, plenty of paint there. And if you're wondering where I got these little teeny mixing cups, I got them at the um, Dollar General, I think it was. It was either there or Dollar Tree, I can't remember. But anyhow, it probably wouldn't work too good for solvent-based paints, but for these water-based paints, it works perfect. I have had no issues, and I've painted quite a few cars now. So, just mix it up. You don't want to over-mix it. You just want it thoroughly mixed, and then you stop. All right, here we go. You can see... The lightness of the base coat when I turn the light on for the paint booth you'll really see it All right, now, while we wait on the paint to dry, we're going to take care of these wheels. As you can see, they're white five spokes, and I just don't think, I mean, it'll look okay with the color, but I want to change it up just a little bit for this person, rather than everybody having the same old thing, all right? So I'm going to take my Molotow, Molotow Chrome pen and chrome out these wheels. A lot of people really get worried when you start doing this, but it's not as hard as it looks as long as you take your time. Take your time, you can do anything. But you see, there's the middle already chromed. And then you just take the pen and you get your everything in a good, good work angle where you're comfortable. And then you can just go right around it, chroming the whole thing. Did 
Okay, and when you get it done, look at it and see if there's anywhere you think you might have missed where you could touch up a little better. Uh, getting around this outer edge, you really don't have to worry about it because it's black anyway. So all you're really trying to do is get the top and down in the center. And once you're satisfied with it, or if you're not satisfied with it, touch it up. Now I'm going to go ahead and answer the question that I know a lot of people is going to ask. And they're going to be like, wouldn't it be simpler to just go ahead and swap it out for some that are already chrome? And you're going to have to answer that question for yourself. And the reason I say that is because first, I see a spot I need to touch up right there. Because first, you have to find a set that's going to fit the width of the car that you have and all that stuff then if you can't find a set that's going to fit the width of the car that means you got to make axle tubes and all that stuff and I have found that it's just for me it is just easier to go ahead chrome the ones that are on it because they're the correct widths they roll perfect and then let the chrome dry and then come back and add the blue ring. I mean, it's just simpler for me to do that way because like I said, if you find someone on another car in the wrong width where well, you're gonna have to make axle tubes, then you gotta go through all that trouble and everything. And I can have all four of these chromed in the time you even get your tools out to make an axle tube, much less start making the axle tube. So you have to, you have to answer that question for yourself, but there's that part. Now we give it a day to dry and then we'll hit it with the blue. Alright, we got her all painted up, got her all clear coated. It really needs to be wet sanded because there's orange peel in the paint. But I mean, the paint job itself turned out marvelous. I mean, I think it looks really good. But it's got a lot of orange peel in it. But <clears throat> at this point, it's got to go. So let's finish it up. Hit the tail lights. I don't want them to be bright red. I just want them to be red. Just something to say, look at me, I'm stopping, you know. Because I don't want to take away from the actual paint car, paint job of the car. Something kind of like that. I think that looks pretty killer. The headlights are tinted. That's part of the interior. So there's nothing I can do there. Only the door handles body color but I can touch up the mirrors so let's do that let's break out another color the gray yes sir and hopefully we can do this without messing up I normally get pretty lucky with it let's try it and see now the mirrors have some silver on them makes them look a little bit more real realistic all right, let's put this together for the final time. Like I say, I wish I had time to wet sand it, but I just don't. So it's just going to have to go as it is and hope the guy enjoys it. So when you see this rapid Nismo, I really wanted to, but I was kind of on a time limit because of the way it was getting to you. I couldn't afford to send it myself, so I had to send it to Ron, diecast, custom, cut, the customizer diecast, and he sent it to you. So I had to go a roundabout way to get it there, but we got it there, nonetheless. So this is going to be the final assembly, and I'll show you what it looks like here in just a second, all put together. Just a quick little recap, this is what we started with. Not a bad casting overall, but you know how it is. You can always do just a little better because Mattel's kind of limited on how much customization they could put in the individual cars. So here we go. This is what we ended up with. Hope you enjoyed wrapping this mode. Take care, buddy, and we'll see everybody in the next video. Thanks for watching.